Hello YouTube and welcome back. I think we all need to accept that July 19 is never coming back because we will never probably get so juiced player packs again, but other packs are still good. So today I want to talk about what do you do with your collectibles, which modes do you play and which packs do you choose because we clearly saw that EA is still juicing some of the packs but not the ones we want. As always guys, if you're new to the channel, please smash that like button and subscribe, it's free, makes me smile and helps a lot. Okay guys, let's dive into it. As I'm recording this on Tuesday, uh, I already opened the Mega Player packs, but Mega Player packs had 93% of chance of pulling a purple, so basically we all know that mega player packs should be the ones we want to go after. Also elite packs. Elite packs is a very common packs you get in a lot of objectives, rewards, and as you can see 55% is still a solid chance. So okay let's say you go and play champs, what do you do there? We know the majority of the community can get 10 wins. 10 wins in hot champs would give you 6 collectibles. You can basically trade in 6 collectibles for 3 mega player packs and that will give you in my opinion at least 6 purples. From the experience I opened all 5s and I think I ended up with at least 10 purples so if it would be me and I would need to decide what I want to do with my collectibles, Mega Player Packs is probably the safest bet. Also, all these packs are tradable, so if you pull something good, you can always sell. Obviously, if you are really good at hack champs and you can get more wins, that's good for you. For example, if you get yourself 12 wins, you can get 4 of these. But you can also, if you want to take a risk, you can trade all your 6 collectibles for 6 elite packs. That's a 55% chance of pulling a purple on every single one, and you can just rip more packs. Let's be very honest, if you're playing hack champs, you probably have a stack team and you don't really need any good cards because everything is cheap and in the end of the day if you took advantage of any of the glitches or juiced packs EA released recently then I think you probably have a lot of fodder you have a really good team and you're just ripping packs for fun but my suggestion would be go with mega player packs or elite packs don't even look at jumbo elite packs or jumbo elite player packs or ultimate packs ultimate choice packs there's no point of opening ultimate choice packs and wasting six collectibles if you could get yourself three mega player packs and actually get much better pools probably also let's go through all these sets and see what we can get here here, is there anything actually worth playing? So we know that Lime Moments really doesn't exist anymore, so let's go to the Hot Rush. I probably would suggest you trade in all your Rush collectibles for a Diamond collectibles and then we can use Diamond collectibles somewhere else because Premium Pack and 3 Gold Player Pack would not really give you anything. If you're someone who grinds Squad Bottles, you can see you can trade a lot of Squad Bottle collectibles again for Jumbo Elite Pack, Mega Pack, NHL Players Pack. NHL Players Pack is not bad, the odds also are quite good. Obviously EA keep adjusting the odds as we go, so maybe by the time this video will be uploaded on YouTube, YouTube and you are watching it, everything will change. As of this point when I'm recording it, the odds are good for NHL player packs, premium packs would not suggest, same about mini NHL player packs, player packs, Jumbo premium packs and all of these, they're just quite, in my opinion, waste. So again, I probably would go with diamond collectibles here, or maybe Jumbo elite pack if you want to be lucky. If elite packs are juiced, then probably Jumbo elite packs are even better. And of course the player packs will give you the best possible outcome out of it. But again, I like to go with the diamond collectibles, so in squad battles I would also suggest you trade in all your collectibles for a diamond collectible. If you're someone who is grinding rivals and you choose to go with the collectibles, and most of the time we all get collectibles anyway, elite pack would be 6 collectibles, elite player pack would be 9, mega player pack would be 12. But even here I would still go with the diamond collectibles because I think the diamond collectibles have the best value. If you play all those modes, I think mini ultimate pack is still a way to go. I don't suggest you go and trade any of your collectibles for anything else. Every mode you play, trade them in for a diamond collectible, then come over to the diamond set and trade them in for a mini ultimate pack. Mini ultimate packs have a really great odds. If you didn't watch my video where I was opening, I know it was a flash sale and so on, but mini ultimate packs have really decent odds. So there is a huge possibility you're gonna pull something big and also these packs are tradable. You can always go and sell it. Even considering the auction house is broken, there are still some cards you can actually sell for quite a lot of coins. For example, I pulled a 98 overall Reinhard and he went for around 220k instantly. So considering I paid only 25k for elite pack, that's a W in my opinion. Even though we know that the rerolls are nerfed, the pack odds are still higher than they ever was before. I would still suggest if you're done with the team builders or you're not interested in the team builders, go and trade in your all gold players up to the let's say 82 because you don't really need anything below that for the gold rerolls. There is a still huge possibility you can pull something good because otherwise NHL 25 will come out and you will end up with a lot of gold cards and there will be really no any need and use for them but at least you can open something and possibly pull a purple which after you can trade in for a collectible because we know there's a lot of content he is planning to release until the NHL 25 comes out and I just always suggest silver upgrades and gold upgrades go and trade in all your fodder there is no any need to hold on it. Yes EA released the base champs but let's be very honest you would probably not use your cards below 82 in your squad anyway. Same about we open so many packs and everyone probably have so many jerseys. Make sure you every day go and trade in your gold jerseys for a premium pack because even those odds, yes, they're still around like let's say 6%, but there is no any need for these jerseys and 
you could just go and pull something. So let's go and see if we can get something in a premium pack. Probably not, because the odds are bad, but you never know. I may pull maybe a good base card to use in the base champs. Okay, I'm getting another jersey, silver players, coach. Okay, maybe maybe we're not getting anything, but it's a folder. Some people are lucky, some are not, but you know what I mean. So do all these things with every single jersey, because all these packs are tradable, and probably you, same as me, all the folder is untradable, and we probably don't have any coins left because we were just ripping packs. If you want to go and buy some players, you need to make some coins. There's no way of flipping anything in the auction house because it's just broken, so the easiest way for you is just hope to pull something bigger than a 97, and then you can sell that on the auction house for at least 200 plus coins. Another thing I want to touch, the quest for a 99, if you didn't complete the quest to 99, I'm really angry about it. These cards can now be pullable in the packs. EA promised that this is an exclusive thing and only earnable if you collect every single XP collectible you needed to get this 99 card. But as you can see, you can now pull Kale Makar and any other quest to the 99 cards in the packs. So it's 1 million coins. Was it actually worth grinding the rush live moments? on any other thing where they was giving us an XP collectibles, in my opinion, no, it's pretty much waste. I get it where EA is coming from and I understand that they want to give new players ability to get every single card, but that's quite unfair for the people who played from day one. So if you have a lot of collectibles and you didn't really trade them all in, go and trade them all in for Elite Pack, because we know Elite Packs give you at least 50% of chance of pulling a purple, and you may even pull this 99 in this pack. There is no point anymore to go and collect every single week, because thanks EA, you did what you did. Same about the team building, you can now buy these cards in the auction house, so I think it's much cheaper. So for example, I bought 193 overall team builder, because that was the only one I needed to complete the last team builder for 250k. You probably would spend more if you would try to collect every single player so what I would suggest if you want to make some coins go and sell all gold players for around 700 we all have hundreds of them even thousands in our collections so all you can do is at least make some coins and people will instantly buy it because not everyone knows then it's much cheaper to buy the players in the auction house and they still try to actually complete the set so what I will do for the rest of my year I'll go and sell every single gold player from NHL for around 700 coins in the auction house and I probably will make a lot of coins by just doing it. So that's another method of how you can make coins during the summer. Regarding theme of the season, I don't suggest you guys go and buy any of the players because with the folder and everything, how much it costs in the auction house, it's so cheap now to make every single player you want. You can basically make a theme of the season card if you have the MSP or even if you don't have the MSP, you can just go and make the MSP, then use the power of collectibles to upgrade some of them. You can make them for around 250 to 300k. That's much, much cheaper. So you can basically get yourself a very cheap 99 overall card. In the auction house, people are still trying to sell them around 500 100k. Again, if you want a tradable card just to try it out and if it doesn't work out maybe to try a sell again, there is a huge risk that if you buy a sellable card you will not be able to sell it for the same amount of coins you bought it. So I probably would say go and make it instead of buying it. All I can say, the game is pretty much dead. Thanks to the packs, everyone have a 99 overall team almost or at least very close to it and at this point I don't even know. Do I need any players? If they release some good players maybe from my favorite teams then yes I will go and pick them up. Otherwise all I have to do is just go and play the modes weekly and see if I can get more packs, I open the packs and then it's just the cycle all over again. But at least this time we know that the packs are actually much better and we can pull something good. Because one thing I like, if I stay let's say an elite 3 in squad battles and that's so so easy, you just have to play a few games, you get elite pack and mega player pack, so that's pretty much guaranteed at least two purples. And it took me around one hour to do it. So. I would suggest you all go and play squad battles while you're just watching your favorite streamer or maybe my video, you never know. And you will get yourself some purples and they're all tradable as well. Same about rivals, you don't have to go to grind until the ultimate. Just look where you get some kind of, let's say, mega player packs, elite packs, because those packs probably will remain one of the best in the game for the remaining of the year. So I really encourage you, don't focus on champs if you're not good, play squad battles, play rivals and you will be guaranteed a pool of decent purples. If you're a new player, it's really the best time to actually go and build your dream team because everything is cheap, every pack pretty much gives you a purple, and in general, it's really fun to play the game now. Hopefully EA brings all these things into NHL 25 and we will not see the October packs again in December, January and February. Okay guys, that's it for today. I think I covered everything about the modes and sets and just share my opinions about what you should be doing. Let me know down in the comment sections below, are you still actually playing the game or you are just logging in for pack? Because I would like to know, like, how many people are actually playing squad battles, rivals, champs and all the modes now considering the packs are much better. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Have a good one and see you guys.